Hello and good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. We just had a, a couple of logistics to work out before we started the broadcast. Um, <clears throat> so delighted uh, to introduce a, a special presentation delivered by our Community Support Committee and Jack Dinsdale, uh, Community Development Manager. Uh, the topic of this presentation is going to be the survey, the Volunteer Satisfaction Survey, um, and the, the name of the presentation is Our Survey Said, so you might recognise that from a popular TV programme. Um, just a couple of house rules to get us started. Um, we are recording the session, so please do be mindful of that. Um, please use the chat, so introduce yourself to others on the call. Uh, share any thoughts or add any questions you might have using that facility. Um, just a reminder, we've all signed a code of conduct, we're all professionals, so please do be respectful of each other. Uh, webcams and microphones, if we could just keep those switched off during the presentations, and that would just help ensure that everybody gets a really clear uh, a stream of the, today's event. Um, but of course, if you're going to ask a question um, later on, please do switch those back on again. Uh, for Q&A, we'll be taking that at the end. Um, two ways of doing it, really. If you would like to put your questions in the chat and I'll moderate that and put questions to our speakers today. Um, or alternatively, at the end of the session, we'll also have a chance for you to kind of put your hand up and you can ask questions directly. And then the last thing, probably the most popular question we get from all of these presentations is, but is this session going to be shared afterwards? And the police say, yes, it will be. Um, we'll do some comms um, probably towards the end of next week, giving an opportunity for the videos to be edited and published. Content. So today we're going to be giving you an introduction to the Community Support Committee. And Chris will be running through some of the aims of the group um, and ways of working. Uh, we'll then look at volunteer engagement. So Kitty uh, will be joining us to talk about volunteer engagement. Um, Michael Warman will be also talking about volunteer satisfaction, some of the trends we saw on the survey. Um, and my colleague, Jack Dinsdale, will be presenting on the roadmap. Uh, fortunately, Jack can't join us today, but he has recorded a message for us all, and I'll be able to help with any questions that you might have, um, as well as the rest of the committee. And then we're just going to end on good practice and question and answer. So, uh, time to meet the committee. So, uh, Chris, I wonder if you could just say hello, introduce yourself and your role. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Banks, Community Support Committee. Um, really privileged to have been working with the individuals that you see on the screen who are going to be able to introduce themselves um, and the some that won't be able to. So, um, on behalf of um, Trissy Tanaka. Um, so I'd just like to just take a moment to introduce Trissy's role within Community Support Committee, because something I found when was establishing the Community Support Committee, that whilst it's important to have portfolio officers um, aligned to really help us drive forward to terms of reference, it's also important for us to have different views and perspectives. So there is a committee member without portfolio role that was introduced. Um, there, there will be opportunities for others to apply for this role, but with Tristy's role, um, something that I wanted to introduce, um, thinking about successful <coughs> views and perspectives was a buddy system um, within CSC, recognizing as volunteers, we're balancing work life and uh, various commitments. So um, Tristy is my buddy within CSE who um, frequently I meet with soundboard and gain different views and perspectives. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for introducing that role. I know not many of our groups will have one in place and maybe that's one for, for some of our SGs or branches attending today to, to have a think about. Um, Saf Palsinger uh, is unable to join us today on this call. I think he'll be joining this evening. Many of you will know Saf uh, from his role in the Agile community, uh, a very active fellow on the Community Support Committee. His role is to support volunteer development and work on conferences and conventions as a planning officer. Um, but we do have with us today Kitty. Kitty, would you like to introduce yourself and your role on the committee? Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. Um, I've been a volunteer for BCS for many years. 
Um, my background is computer science and technology. So currently, I'm holding the post as the member group committee roles officer. So from time to time, we will review the current remit and roles and responsibility of our um, branches and our specialist group. So I'll, I'll be doing a short presentation later um, to talk about how we engage our volunteers. And I will pass it to the next one. Mike. Mike, okay. Hello, my, yeah, my name is Mike Woolman. I'm also a volunteer. I have a similar role to Christy, but my experience professional experience as a business analyst. So I help the committee predominantly with looking at analysis, understanding trends. I'll be doing a small presentation on the results from the survey in a few moments. Thank you. Cheers, Mike. And uh, Kieran Hoy won't be able to join us, uh, but he is also on the committee supporting branches. Um, he's a fellow and in his day job, um, he works in the NHS um, as a CIO, I believe. Uh, we also have with us a familiar face, Sahir. I'm sure many of you know Sahir. Sahir, would you like to just say hello and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Sahir. I'm also a volunteer in many groups. And I'm in the CSP, um, the uh, specialist group, community, committee, community officer. Thank you, Sahir. And Peter, Peter, please say hello. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Peter Choi. And um... <clears throat> Glad to greet you all as a community uh, commit, a committee communications officer. And I'm quite new to the CSC, but before that, I, uh, I was the chairman of the Hong Kong International Section, has been serving in Hong Kong for 20 years and now based in London. Uh, I love the BCS and um, uh, especially in the age of AI now, and everybody can use AI to do this and do that. Nobody knows who is professionals and who is not. And I believe that B, uh, BCS got a role to play in this point of time. A great organization, great communities, and with tremendous potential to become even better. So um, we need your help. So um, if there is anything at all that you think the community uh, communications in this organization can, um, if you have any idea at all, just thank me on LinkedIn and I'm all used. Cheers. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. So there's a call to action already. Um, and then we also have uh, Jack, as I say, Jack won't be able to join today. He's on holiday. It's his birthday. He's away in Paris. So he's having a wonderful time, but he has taken some time to record a video um, and we'll be sharing that later. Jack joined my team as community development and partnerships manager, oh, probably about September. Uh, he was working half in my team and half on the IT tech standard um, uh, in the registration standards team. And he's been full time within the community team uh, from January. So, so I will now pass over to Chris. Uh, Chris, if you'd like to just introduce some of the aims of CSE. Thanks, John. Um, and for those of you who've joined some of the sessions that we've done over the last couple of years, hopefully these aims um, should look familiar. They've been the aims of um, community support committee since. Then. And I suppose just to recap. Um, why CSC was established. So I suppose as we um, were entering into post-pandemic world, um, what we were starting to see is that we'd all learn to do things a little bit differently. People's expectations, communities and organisations um, were identifying the needs for continuous improvement and evolution. And there were other pressures that we were starting to see around budget reductions, um, better resource utilisation around fundraising as event sponsorship and a need to be able to sort of bridge the gap between BCS strategic governance, the community and member groups and so on. Um, and also the member group rules um, needing an update. So um, I, I'd say over the last um, year or so, we've been working on the foundations to support these aims, um, to identify, develop and adopt sharing good practice. So for those of you that have been um, coming to some of the events, thank you for taking the time and sharing ideas. I'm hoping that um, from what you hear from the rest of the committee today, um, that we've been listening um, and we want to be able to share with you what the plan is so we can start to realise the plans going forwards to really align with these aims around um, communication and thinking about the changes to member group rules and uh, the role that CSC plays with the community board. So CSE um, ways of working. 
Um, it's been very much organic from the beginning. So the, the ways of working that we have developed has been very much the story of how CSC has been formed. So um, first of all, CSC was established. Um, we then started to engage um, through um, a recruitment onboarding process and then starting to look at what we needed to do to enable each of the portfolio roles. Um, and there's, there's still more to do there. And then thinking about the ongoing um, evolution um, of how now we, we get into the point of having CSC, um, it's that continuous communication um, about how we're um, working together, collaborating as a committee, but with others. Um, sharing different views and perspectives, um, which are really important. And I think when we think about the journey CSC has been through, and we think about the new ideas or initiatives that we see coming up within the community, it's going to be a journey of evolution that we go through. So the, the four steps of establish, engage, enable and evolve are very much to help us pr uh, really realise progress over perfection and recognising that there's a need for us to be able to iterate, to monitor and measure what we're doing, um, because I think being able to move big rocks is getting harder. So I think we're more about how we iterate and sort of move in the pebbles um, to create a bit of a landslide to really support um, volunteers and member groups across the community. So um, without further ado, what I'd like to do is... Um, um, hand over the baton to Kitty to elaborate on how we've gone about the volunteer engagement um, and how we've really been eliciting re requirements to develop the CSC roadmap. Hi everyone. So to give you an overview of the volunteer engagement in the BCS, so the first question, why do we need volunteers? Because volunteers contribute their own time and their service to the BCS is a great help to BCS is a center to enable BCS to achieve its mission to serve the technological community. And who are the BCS volunteers? Largely the BCS members, but in fact, non-BCS members are also welcome to become uh, a volunteers. And also, we also use this to um, maybe leading to the um, interest of the volunteers become the BCS members to enjoy the membership benefits. So you might ask, what do the volunteers do in the, at the BCS? Volunteers help BCS, um, as for me, I just like the examples, I help organize events and I uh, contribute my time writing blogs and uh, articles on the IT Now magazine. Uh, I give talk, I mentor young professional who are in the early stage of their career. And I help with the workshop, I facilitate the workshop. And so basically is to share my expertise through a mentorship, coaching, talks, uh, interview, focus group, et cetera. Mm, where, where are the BCS volunteers? Um, from our record, it shows primarily uh, our volunteer space in the UK with a small numbers in the overseas uh, branches. For example, this is a very good example. Peter, he's been a Hong Kong BCS branch chairman for over 20 years. And he dedicated his own time and service to serve BCS for the last two decades. Thank you uh, very much, Peter. And when do the BCS volunteers operate? It's really flexible based on the volunteers availability to provide their volunteer service, either in person in the BCS uh, offices or uh, online remotely. So. How do we uh, recruit and attract volunteers? We use um, our communication channels like email, newsletter, um, social media, a referral, word of mouth. So if you understand that your uh, BCS branches members and uh, specialist group members and already volunteers your time uh, in the BCS, if you know someone who are BCS members, and who have not been volunteering, encourage them. And if you have friends who like to volunteer, but they are not BCS members, reach out to us. We welcome their time and uh, services. So the volunteer, we in, in return, the BCS will support the volunteers 
onboarding, training, and also recognition uh, to honor their uh, services. So for me, not just I'm volunteering my time, I've learned so much from my peers. I learned a lot in the seminars, talks, and um, events. So it is a two-way uh, direction. I offer my time, but I also learn from other more experienced, more um, people with their uh, expertise in their uh, subject. And so next slide. As I said, we organize a lot of events and um, seminars, conferences. These are just the highlights last year, uh, some of the key events we have organized. In 2023, we have organized two community conventions. Uh, it's a hybrid event. And also we held two chair and vice chair meetings. And in November, end of November, we organized our inaugural inclusion officers uh, event, also hybrid and in, in our London branch. And we have financial update, treasurer, treasurer training. That's as we, we give back to the volunteers to learn about finance and uh, treasurer uh, matters. We also conducted a volunteer satisfaction survey. So with this, I'm going to hand over uh, to John for to um, walk through with you the volunteer survey's results. Thank you. Hello, my, sorry, my name is Michael. I'm one of the reasons I joined the, the volunteer. Uh, Community Support Committee was to help try and improve the experience of volunteers. So when the survey results were published, I volunteered to do the analysis. Just as a quick summary, because it was a long time ago that we started this, the uh, the survey. It was between June and July, 146 completed from 131 people. Um, so some people completed the survey twice. So 20% response rate across all our volunteers. Questions were split into two types. The first set questions one to eight, it was a score one to eight, one to ten rather, and questions nine to thirteen were narrative. So I took some analysis. And I, my day job is a business analyst. I just went through and updated some work. And I also want to say thank to Jack because Jack did take the arduous half of looking at the theme, so I could um, do some analysis. Thanks, Chris. If we go to the next slide. So it's, this is the summary table that I created based on the results. I looked at the net promoter score, the average score, did some validation. Um, the most satisfied are actually the international sections followed by specialists. Least satisfied seem to be the branches on the responses that we've had. We then looked at the, the lowest scoring questions. Question three is low scoring, but it's dependent upon the question, if we can make improvements to question four, six, and seven. One of them is communications from HQ about volunteering roles and responsibilities, how your employer organization organization recognizes your contribution and opportunities for professional development. Thanks, Chris. Uh, the other thing I'd looked at, I looked at the geographic spread. I looked at the current branches to see if there was any, any patterns within the responses. It seemed to be the people who are most um, satisfied with their volunteering experience within the UK, certainly centered around London, the home counties, Midlands and the Scottish Lowlands in and around the Edinburgh branch. Uh, the other thing to note is that the actual branch stretches at the moment don't appear to align to any geographic spec that most people know, um, not, not aligned to any region. Thanks, Chris. So the first slide was for questions one to nine, uh, one to eight, questions nine to 13. These are the narratives. This is where all the hard work that Jack put in identifying the themes for each of the comments. I then grouped them and looked at the top 20%. And then I've kind of produced the links. So there's links between question 11, HQ support of 14% and 29% feedback question. And we've used the feedback from this section and the others to help develop and progress um, the, the roadmap, which we will be coming on to shortly. Thanks, Chris. Does anybody have any questions before we hand over to to the next section? I know that was a lot, and that was quite a quick run through. Is everybody okay? Uh, it looks like it, Mike, at the moment. <clears throat> but I'm cool. 
there's quite a lot there for people to think over so we can come back so if you have got a question about that okay. uh, we'll return to it uh, at the end of the presentation plenty of time thanks pretty much thanks so mike um so i'm going to pass on to uh, a virtual jack now we've got a video recording uh, we tested this before the session it worked so fingers crossed it does and i'll introduce jack to now share uh, a roadmap Hi everyone, my name is Jack and I'm a Community Development and Partnerships Manager here at BCS. I'm so sorry I can't be there in person with you today. So what I wanted to do is record this little segment just to walk you through the CSC roadmap that we created off the back of the feedback we received from the Volunteer Satisfaction Survey, or VSS for short. As you can see here, we were able to establish three key themes from the feedback, communication and collaboration, volunteer experience and development, and member group enablement and support. So using these themes, we've created a pipeline of projects we hope to deliver across the next year or so, all conceptualized to improve the volunteer experience. The first focus emerging from the VSS feedback revolves around enhancing communication, fostering collaboration. Per the VSS analysis, there was a clear call for revitalizing regular communication channels tailored towards volunteers. To address this, our newsletter revival initiative aims to incorporate various aspects highlighted within the feedback itself, notably showcasing the remarkable efforts of our member groups, disseminating new resources and policy updates, as well as offering new opportunities to engage with the broader BCS community. You should have received the inaugural quarterly volunteer newsletter on the 22nd of February. We hope you found it super insightful and enjoyed reading the stories shared by your peer volunteers. You can see here that the roadmap illustrates forthcoming releases scheduled for April, July, and October. In March, we're also convening the first chair and vice chair quarterly meeting of 2024 on the 18th. Subsequent meetings for chair and vice chairs are set for the June the 5th and September 19th. Looking ahead to the end of Q3 slash the beginning of Q4, the CSC plans to host what we're tentatively calling a member group speed date session. This event aims to foster familiarity amongst member groups and provide a platform for volunteers to network and deepen their understanding of the wider community. Under the umbrella of communication and collaboration, we're also looking to establish role-based communities. These dedicated communities centered around governance roles will provide committee members in mandatory positions with a forum to seek advice and support each other. The inclusion officer network, which is already in existence, will be further developed in line with this project in the coming months. Progress in this area is expected to be well underway by the end of Q4. The second overarching theme pinpointed in the BSS feedback revolves around volunteer experience and development. To address this, our initial step was to align the BSS feedback on desired training with our existing resources. We discovered a substantial overlap with our current offering and identified areas for enhancement, such as social media training, We've shared this need with the BCSC social media team who are in the process of developing tailored training. While still in progress, we anticipate a release during Q3. This month, our focus was today's event, establishing a feedback loop with our volunteers to show them that we're listening to them and acting upon their valued feedback. Moving forward, March marks the commencement of phase one of our user experience or UX enhancements. We're collaborating with BCS's UX team to simplify and refine the volunteer UX based on common pain points and in-demand resources slash tools. Phase one will primarily focus on evaluating the volunteer hub, optimizing the Zendesk platform and consolidating member group communication channels. In April, we're looking to collaborate with BCS's content board and engagement team to establish best practices for community generated CPD content. With the launch of BCS Discover, we're looking for ways to establish a streamlined process for community-led content generation to occupy our dedicated CPD platform. By May, we aim to kick off phase two of the UX enhancements, building upon insights from phase one to further refine the volunteer experience. Once we've established the desired UX, we'll focus on enhancing the volunteer journey from onboarding to departure in alignment with phase two objectives. Another crucial aspect of volunteer experience and development is member group reporting. We plan to establish a baseline pre-VSS2 to gauge the impact of CSC's efforts and identify areas needing additional support and development. Lastly, in September, as I've just alluded to, 
we aim to launch the second annual VSS, continuing our commitment to enhancing the volunteer experience based on your valuable feedback. The third and final major theme identified from the VSS feedback focuses on member group enablement and support. So similar to the previous initiative, the first step in this process was to align the VSS feedback on resources with resources already available to volunteers on the volunteer hub. So this process was super insightful as it revealed several actions for us to take in order to enhance not only our current offering, but also identify a scope to develop new resources in areas of high demand. So one such example of a high demand area is that we recently launched a Growing Your Member Group's Finances page, which covers all things sponsorship in an attempt to directly address feedback we received whereby groups asked for further funding and ideas in order to generate more income. We're also embarking on a review of existing process guidance. So while this will be a significant endeavor, we're establishing a prioritized pipeline of tasks starting with the highest priority items. As part of this project, we want to ensure that the content is periodically maintained through established review cycles. Moving over to February, we began outlining a new CSC committee role, the Member Group Life Cycles Officer. This role entails overseeing the creation and closure of member groups, as well as to provide support to member groups, particularly those at risk. In March, we see the CSC conducting a member group site experiment to address the need for more interactive and engaging branch sites. We recognize that most groups lack the resources to optimize them fully themselves, so wanted to ensure that any deliverables are feasible undertakings. This effort synergizes really nicely with ongoing efforts to develop a volunteer branding toolkit. Such planned items from the branding team include social media training and event templates to promote consistent branding across groups, along with guidance on using the BCS name on social media platforms. As part of the establishment of the role-based committees we mentioned earlier, the CSC is leveraging member group committees to generate formal role guidance, starting with the four mandatory roles. These working groups will serve as the cornerstone of role-based networks, providing support not only to each other, but also to prospective committee members. And that brings me pretty much to the end of our segment covering the CSC roadmap. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to share them with the team. I'm sure they'll be delighted to respond. Thanks again for your time. So thank you, Virtual Jack. Um, appreciate him taking the time to do that for us yesterday. <clears throat> Apologies for a couple of the pauses. Um, I hadn't quite realised if I went to respond to the chat, I'd end up pausing the video. So apologies for the, 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 the breakup in that video there. Um, I'm now going to pass back to Chris. Chris, over to you. Hi, everyone. All right, thanks, John. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to thank um, those uh, well, from CSC that have shared sort of some of the things that have been doing in the background and a lot of the good analysis work that's taken place. And I think from what we've heard from um, what Jack shared in the roadmap that we've developed, really starting to think about how we can put volunteer um, at the heart of what we're doing um, and also enabling member groups, um, that communication, collaboration is absolutely key. I think one of the things when I, I stepped into the role as chair at CSC, um, th this was something you, you may have seen previously, um, this image that had um, teams um, right in the middle. So it's what we've been using to collaborate and it was something we were looking at how we could expand the use of it. And I, I think if I'm completely honest, um, got it wrong. Um, and so what we've been doing is really sort of listening to the feedback that there's been, recognising some of the low scoring questions that were coming through were relating to communication. Um, and now we've got a dedicated um, theme, which is very much focused around communication, collaboration, and the activities that Jack outlined. So what we are now launching, and um, you can join today, is a LinkedIn private group for BCS community volunteers. Um, the purpose of this group is so we can enhance communication collaboration because we recognize think it's not perfect at the moment, um, being able to find information. So th this is a, a hopefully a quick win where we can help um, to navigate where some of that content is. So um, please, um, from today's session, there will there's a call to action and we really welcome you to um, join the 
the LinkedIn group, there's already some posts that are on there um, that really um, help um, to find some of the information that's there um, today. Um, but as Jack alluded to in the roadmap, that's going to be evolving over the coming months as we really start to fo um, focus on the UX enhancements. Um, it, it doesn't take us away from the member forum, um, which we've got in the community area that's set up. Um, so we still want to get the discussions going into those areas so we can really get focused on important topics and collaborate together on a, a private platform um, that has lots of good features on there, um, some that LinkedIn doesn't have. Um, and then finally, the volunteer hub. Um, you, you heard Jack mention that we, we've got um, some enhancements that are going to be coming in this area over the coming months. But for now, we've still got um, good information that is available there. Um, but we do recognise that there's some improvements that we need to make. So I, I suppose when we're thinking about... Um, the LinkedIn group that we've got, um, as John mentioned at the start of um, this presentation, sort of um, there is the BCS code of conduct. And I, I think the, the one thing we just really want to make sure is we're sort of stepping into the realms of using social media platform, which um, we haven't done to this scale across the community of volunteers. We just really encourage people to be um, respectful of conduct and think about content that's relevant um, to the discussion threads that are taking place and really use it for um, promoting sort of good things that are happening across the community. Um, so staying away from self-promotion or any spam um, because what we really want to be able to do ultimately is to be able to gather the good and surface it at scale, um, especially within the community of volunteers um, to try and make things easier. So I, I suppose this is call to action or ways to get involved. Um, so there's links here that will take you to um, the um, volunteer community um, LinkedIn group. Um, if you would like to apply for the CSE member group lifecycle officer role um, that Jack alluded to on the roadmap, um, there's a link available to the role description um, so you can see what the role is about and you can apply. And there's the, the CSE member without portfolio that alluded to earlier. And we're lucky enough to have um, Tristy and Mike already um, fulfilling those roles and doing a great job across the committee. Um, but there's still room for more. Um, so if you're interested in joining the committee in that capacity, um, there's a link to the role description. And then um, finally, on the um, Monday, the 18th of March, six o'clock, um, we've got the chair and vice chair quarterly meeting. Um, so um, Jack mentioned that we're going to be doing the survey again in September. So what we're going to be looking at is really um, understanding sort of your, your thoughts, feedback, areas that we can continue to focus on, improve and iterate. Um, but I think what's going to be really interesting um, as we go forwards is we've now got a baseline of metrics um, for all of your contributions and um, having 20% response rate, I think was a good start. Um, hopefully by starting to broaden some of the communication channels, we can look to um, increase that number. I'm not gonna set a benchmark of what we're gonna to aspire to, but if we can do better than 20%, um, I think that would be really good because all of the voices of all volunteers really do count. And I hope um, that's starting to convey in what we've shared with you today. Mm -hmm.